My name is Daniel Hunter. I'm a robotics engineering graduate from the University of California at Santa Cruz. Uh, for my senior project, I led a five-person team to develop this robot, uh, which we're calling the, the Indoor Autonomous Navigation System. So we have a front-facing you know, website control panel where the user can submit a destination and an origin point, and the robot will then navigate throughout its environment to find where it's been told to go. Uh, we were particularly interested in a project of this nature due to the increased prevalence of autonomous navigation vehicles in society, for instance, the rise of self-driving cars, as well as drones. And so this allowed us to do a, a thorough investigation of the implementation for your localization algorithms, as well as route and path planning throughout a, a given environment. So the way this works is we have a, a Raspberry Pi on board running Gross Kinetic, and it handles the, the high level route path planning and localization. And then we have a, an Arduino that handles the motor actuation and sensor readings. And those two work in conjunction on board. We obviously have a LiDAR here as our chief sensor for detecting our environment. And we also use your wheel encoders for odometry. And then we have the previously mentioned online uh, control panel, which sends commands down to the Raspberry Pi, and the Raspberry Pi then handles it. So that's a, a brief overview of our system, and now we'll sort of discuss the more in-depth specifics. Hey, my name is Kevin, and in this project I was in charge of mechanical and hardware design. I also helped in low-level software programming. The first steps when designing this project were to determine the mechanical feasibility and to make sure that our budget was satisfied with this. To determine mechanical feasibility, we used SolidWorks. Shown here is our SolidWorks design. Once mechanical feasibility was established in this program, we then proceeded to make sure that our hardware components would satisfy the budget. Once these two conditions were satisfied, we then proceeded to build the robot. Shown here is the SolidWorks design of the robot. Shown here is our robotic frame, which was manufactured from MDF material using a laser cutter. The high-level computing device is a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B, which is used for navigation algorithms and localization. The low-level computing device is a Teensy 3.6 microcontroller, which is used to pull the sensors and also to drive the motors on the robot. The three main sensors on our robot are the Adafruit IMU, which is used for estimating the initial pose, the RP LiDAR, which is used for obstacle avoidance and mapping, and the encoders on the motors, which are used for providing odometry data. The robot additionally includes an LCD screen, which is used for debugging purposes. Here is our web interface. You can access this through any device, computer, smartphone of any kind. The user is presented with a map, which is a 2D occupancy grid here. Oh, currently, we have our Baskin Engineering third floor set up. And we will give it a starting position of north exit and the destination as a vending machine. When we hit submit, the robot should start navigating.
Hi, my name is Kyle Ebding. I'm a computer engineering graduate from the University of California at Santa Cruz with a concentration in computer networks. As such, my contribution to this project was mostly centered around building the web server and establishing communication between the web server and the robot. So if we look over at the web server here, uh, from the user interface, we see three buttons at the top, start mapping, end mapping, and toggle movement. Start mapping tells the robot to enter manual user mode, which means that the user will have to control it with a connected keyboard. And it will use the LiDAR to construct a map of the environment around it. And you drive it around until you have a complete map of the area that you want the robot to be able to navigate in. When done with that, the user will then press end mapping, which tells the robot to save that map, convert it into a PGM file, and upload that to the server. When the user selects a starting point and a destination on the map, for example, in this case, I'm going to go from Jack's Lounge to Perk's Coffee, and I press Submit, uh, it refreshes the page, but in the background, it sends a message to the robot uh, telling the robot, this is approximately where you are, and this is where you need to go. From there, the robot will autonomously navigate to the destination. The underlying mechanism for the communication between the robot and the server is MQTT, which stands for Message Queuing Telemetry Transport, and it's generally used for thermometers and sensors and such, small amounts of data transferred over a sometimes unreliable network, so it was perfect for this project. Um, the MQTT runs on a publication and subscription model, which means that the robot can subscribe to a topic, and then when the server wants to send a message to the robot, it just uh, publishes a message to that topic, and the back end of MQTT will automatically handle sending that message across the internet to the robot. So this is important because it means that we have end-to-end -end reachability without compromising the security of having to force the Raspberry Pi to have a uh, globally addressable uh, IP address at all times. So what happens when the robot receives an MQTT message is that there is a C program I wrote running in the background that uh, listens for MQTT messages and processes them to determine what the contents are and what the topic of the message was. And based on the topic and contents, it will call shell scripts, which are used to pass data into ROS, which is, of course, the high-level control mechanism of the robot. And by passing that data into ROS, it is giving high-level commands of what the robot should do. Okay, so taking from Kyle's end here, we receive a starting and an end position through the MQTT protocol, and we use those two parameters to navigate. So first, first thing, we use ROS, which is the robot operating system, it contains various packages and software libraries for common robotics applications. And in this uh, problem that we're trying to solve with indoor navigation, it's a field of probabilistic robotics where statistics and probability theory are used to obtain um, localization, pose estimates, and things like that. The reason why it's called probabilistic is because, or the reason why we need that is because. Um, our sensors will give us um, measurements with error, and we can't rely solely on the sensors to localize. So the main uh, algorithm that we use is called a particle filter, and a particle filter will create various guesses. The robot will create various guesses of where it could potentially be on the map, and based on its current sensor readings, it will filter out all the unlikely guesses and after it filters out the unlikely guesses, we get a particle cloud around the robot's real position. And averaging those, all those particles in the particle cloud, we can get the robot's true position. So this is useful because if we get um, a sensor reading that's very wrong or that's not likely to be received by the robot, um, it will just affect, it will have very little effect on its uh, position. And there's two main components in our system, which is map building and SLAM, and then we have also navigation. So we use the ROS package gmapping for SLAM and map building, and we use the ROS navigation stack. So the system works in two ways. First, we create a map 
we drive the robot around with G-mapping and we create a map. It's called a 2D occupancy grid and it looks like a floor plan of the environment. We feed that map into our navigation stack, into the ROS navigation stack, and with the starting and an end position, the robot can use the map and navigate throughout the environment. Hi, my name is Juan. Um, I was in charge of the low level on this robot. So what that entailed is that the Raspberry Pi calculates the path that it's going to take and it sends PWM values to the Teensy. The Teensy receives these PWM values and passes them through a PID controller. The PID controller uses odometry wheel encoder data to correct the PWM values. Um, and then I was also in charge of using setting up the IMU. What the IMU does is set up the initial pose for the robot to use in the navigation algorithm.